Okay, copy that. I got B also 14th and Vista, I think, or sorry, 14th and Grande Vista. They're over, they're actually near the man. Uh, again, it's a man with a machete covered in blood. Uh, we're gonna be heading for that. And again, we're monitoring the pursuit. All right. Yeah, Rick has the pursuit. Uh, uh, cancel. Okay. He's following for 14. Okay, they're canceling the pursuit. Vehicle last seen eastbound from 14th. I'm going to continue to Soto and 8th for the man with the machete covered in blood. The vehicle going westbound, 14th Street, approaching by the Vista. The vehicle's going to be a great view of the machete man. All right, so as, uh, as Keith just said on the radio, we've got a weird machete man call. I don't know if it's legitimate, but it's close enough for us to, uh, to go take a look. Uh, machete man. Covered in blood, carrying the machete at the intersection of 8th and Soto. So we're going to go over there. We're actually going underneath the new 6th Street Bridge, which I don't think we've done. I don't think we've gone under it on Code 20, which is kind of cool. So big, uh, big infrastructure thing, very topical in the news, people doing donuts on it, all sorts of stupid stuff. But either way, we're going for the uh, Machete Man, who is uh, very close to the 6th Street Bridge, but I know exactly, I'm very familiar with this intersection. So, and of course, we have a big rig getting off in front of us. That's great. That's wonderful. All right, they're, and there's units just showing up, and they're asking for a better location, so they might be... 397, code 6, 8th and Soto, stand by. Come on, we're so close. I want to see them. <laughs> they're asking for a better location, but the intersection's right here. Too. There's another unit. Yep. Okay, so they're saying he's in this intersection. He was last seen in this intersection. I don't know why they're going down that way, but this is, if he was last seen here, then you'd think you want to look around over here. Let's see, let's see if we can find him. Machete man, where are you? Where are you? Can't be too hard to find, right? He's covered in blood and... There's an alley over here. Uh, empty. 13 door street to be sure that George you had to code 6 on the 14 game. Oh, where would he be? Where would he be? Four George 3, correction. 13 George 32, roger. There's a giant rat over here on the right, too, by the pole. Giant, giant rat. Oh, they're about to put it out as UTL watch, because there's, no, there's no victim. They're going to say, oh, there's no victim. And then they're going to go, well, we can't find him. The alley's empty there. Mm, they went south, so let's do, let's do that. Ah, oh, where did he go, Tay? Where did he go? He's elusive. He is elusive, no, legit. Where is, oh, oh, no, oh, okay. Oh, they're looking, they're looking, they want him. They're looking for him. Uh, he couldn't have gone that far. They just called the intersection behind us. Let's check. Uh, let's check down Eighth Street. Where did he go, Tater? Where did he go? Machete man covered in blood. So you can walk. Oh, oh. Yeah, where is it? They're they're right in here. If you look to the. You'll see two, two LAPD units right there. That, those are the two that are on this call. There's one, there's a supervisor that has the beanbag shotgun. 
Maybe, oh, no, trash can. So you can you can grab a machete, be covered in blood, and walk around over here. Is that him? Where? Uh, he just puts it in there and then That guy, the whole... Look at over here is a family with their with their kid. Flip back around. I, I... You think it's that guy right there at the, at the corner? On the tent? Yeah. No. Oh. No, they just drove right by him. Well, maybe they didn't see him. Didn't see him. He's sitting. He's sitting right there. Okay. There goes the. There goes a unit. There's the guy in the mobile. You think this is him right here, sitting on the? Right there. You think that's him? Put something down. He's not covered in blood, is he? Four forty, Roger. Is he covered in blood? No. No. He had a stick. Oh. It Close. Was, it was a candlestick. <sighs> well, hmm. they're looking behind the tra the uh, chevron here. Let's go. Let's go back here. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come out on the on the other side. Yep, there's black and whites everywhere. Mm. Well, let's uh, let's sit right here. There's some trees over here you could have ducked into maybe. And I'm definitely not getting out to look. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's got uh, he's got code three, uh, code two backup lights here. What's the point of that? You can't see. I mean, I guess people know you're backing up, but you can't you can't see what's going on with that. Your epileptic reversing lights. <laughs> uh, four of the fives in the area. Uh, I'm UTL so far, waiting for LAPD to put out a code four, but they're UTL. I'll be uh, standing by until they put it out, and then we'll be clear. All right, well, Machete Man. Machete Man, as we say, is everywhere, and he is nowhere. He is on every street, and he is on no street. No evidence of a man with machete. But he was here tonight. He was here. I guarantee it. Somebody saw him. Oh, yeah, it's quick four. Certainly needs no evidence of... The legend... The legend of Machete Man continues on. The, the, uh... It's like the legend of Bigfoot, right? Yeah, I was just gonna say, it's like, it's like a cryptid legend. <laughs> it's, it's the legend. It's LA's freaking cryptid. Yeah, it's, it's LA's Bigfoot, is Machete Man, I'm telling you. It's, uh, it's legit. He, uh, I'm telling you, he's everywhere and he's nowhere. I, I've seen Machete Man and we've seen him here on, we've seen him here on Code 2 Zero well, one time on the metro station, which is actually close to here, funny enough. Uh, yeah, currently, standby. So, yeah, basically, uh, Machete Man is, is our version of Bigfoot. People see him all the time. We hear Machete Man calls all the time. Look at this on-ramp, by the way. This is like, it's like a right angle. <laughs> it's an acute on-ramp. All right. Um, so we see him all the time, or we hear about him all the time, I should say, on the on comms, right? There's calls of people who have been stabbed by a guy with a machete. We had the guy, oh, the guy on the bus. The guy on the bus with the, with the, the head wound. Uh, machete Man got him. Um, did he actually see Machete Man? Who knows? Who knows? So it's a, uh, it's definitely, I, is Machete Man, this is the question, I get by this guy before he merges his BMW into us. Um, here's the question for everyone. And in the chat, I wanna know, are we onto something? Is Machete Man LA's version of Bigfoot? Is it the legend of Machete Man? Like the legend of, of Bigfoot? Is that the, is that the deal? I think it is, personally. 
the legend of Machete Man? With the, with and make like, it look like Bigfoot? Look like Bigfoot but he's oh, got make him like a Yeti but with a machete? <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeti with a machete. Yeti with a machete. There it is. Yeti with a machete. That's it. Legit. Because there's... Oh. All right. Because I personally, I've never just been driving and looked over and seen like a guy walking with a machete. I haven't seen it. But we know they're out there because we hear them all the time. But then it goes down just like that. LAPD shows up. They're Johnny on the spot. And then they look around and they go, eh, he's gone. He's gone. Or if there's a victim, you find the victim. But where's Machete Man? In the wind. So we'll leave it at that. I'm getting a phone call. We'll leave it at uh, uh, Legend of Machete Man. Machete Bigfoot. I think it's good. All right, let me talk to uh, Gabe and we'll uh, to be continued. <laughs> hey, what's going on? So we've got a DUI crash in Lancaster, which is fatal. And then we're rolling up at this guy with the gun call here off of Boyle, first in Boyle. So we're just north of the uh, Sixth Street Bridge. It's funny, we, I feel like we did a giant loop because we were just here. For the viewer, he sees the residence of that apartment is in Timo White. The others do not reach that location. Yeah, I think it's Timo White. Okay. We'll do a... We have one detained. Can they verify if that person is a person they heard or spoke with Okay, so they might have someone... It sounds like they already have someone detained on this shooting, so... Really have everybody continuing through the time for a knockdown. Yeah, they do that. All right. So this incident sounds fairly interesting, and uh, tonight's kind of a unique night. Um, we've got Gabriel out and Keith, so we're kind of just floating between uh, what they're with, with uh, their calls and what they're up to. So we're uh, we're right in the middle. Um, this doesn't sound too crazy right now, what we're going to, but it's we're just kind of filling in. So hopefully we run into, hopefully we run into the rest of the guys. That'd be pretty cool. We've got multiple, multiple stories sent in right now and we're, we're rolling up right now. We're gonna make this right turn and we should see, should see a bunch of, uh, Forty-eight ninety-five. Should be LAPD here. Yeah. Do you want me to take that, or are you going to wait? I don't know what I'm rolling up here. Uh, Forty-five David's code six on Boyle, a uh, man with a gun, shots fired. We'll flip around, get a get a good spot. What what call are you referring to? Uh, Five thirty-six. I didn't hear it. The pole. Oh. <laughs> Shots heard with a possible party down uh, on Sepulveda under the 405 by Getty Center. Unless uh, 499 is closer, obviously. No, that's a 499 handle if he's available. 499, requesting in a stop traffic. Shots heard only or shooting? They're stopping traffic right now. They said, uh, shots heard. So, pretty down. so it, it sounds like we have a, this is going to be a possibly a man barricaded inside this building. This might turn into a SWAT thing. Yeah, this might turn into a SWAT thing. We can respond, just verify what do they need, what do they have. Yeah, what do they have? That's great. Four George Nine verify there's, there's a unit stopping traffic. They're coming over here. They're going to stop traffic. Four George Nine stopping traffic from the George Unit. And there goes another George Unit. So the the gang units for LAPD are some of the few uh, Tauruses left in the <laughs> in the fleet, which is which is pretty cool. Okay, so they're going to block traffic southbound, but I guess leave northbound open. Also, 455, they made a mistake by clicking submit before the video was uh, processed. Uh, I'm wondering if it sent a notification because uh, I re-uploaded the video. Yes, it would send a notification on that. Um, is that the one at 1044? Because I'm looking at that right now. So, yeah, if this turns into a SWAT thing, then... I already deleted the oh. previous one, uh, but I re-uploaded <sighs> Okay, copy that. Yeah, make sure. Okay, copy. Great, good job, Keith. 
Why would you do that? And this is possibly gangs, right? Yeah, because there's a lot of there's a lot of gang units here, so I'm not really I'm not really super. More interested in that. Mm. And I copy the rollover northbound 101 at Lancashire. Four of the fives. I uh, gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. Stand by. So. It's it's pretty much all gang units here. It's all slick tops. This is the only explorer that they have. So. If they call and, and again, they're not stopping. Uh, they're not stopping traffic on the uh, on the northbound side. Only southbound, just so the guys can do their thing. Um, I think we're going to leave this one alone. If they end up dispatching uh, SWAT out here, we will hear that, and then we'll know where they're going, and we have a little bit of background information. But it sounds like just a guy came out, fired a couple rounds. They don't have a victim, because FD is not responding. Randy's got a motorcycle pursuit. So, considering tonight's fairly busy so far, I'm going to not put us in this position. I think we're gonna we're gonna clear off and head uh, head back to staging. So I'll let the guys know. But um, yep, that's what's uh, that's what's up. We're gonna we're gonna come off that again because it's not. If if the guy was barricaded in there, he had a hostage. They've got shots fired while officers are there. Then is right officer down or suspect down. Then that completely changes it. It becomes a, a very different a very different situation. But. Um, just to just to sit around while these guys try to figure out what they're gonna do, it's gonna take uh, probably about an hour for them to try and make contact, see if there's anybody in the building, determine if they actually had a shooting. They need to find evidence to support that, whether a good witness or you know bullet casings, what have you. So it takes a little while before. Armed robbery expo in Vermont at the 7-Eleven, I think she said, right? Or AM PM. Let me find out where uh, Gabe is, and then we might... 536, are you at Expo? Or, correction, what's your status? <laughs> are you at Expo? No, you're not at Expo. That's where I'm going. Okay, I don't know if you heard 211 Expo in Vermont. I think it's the AM PM. If you're right there, I would uh, I would check that out. 45 is going to be clearing uh, back northbound 101 from the four level. So, yeah, again, tonight's a little bit different. We're going to roll some major calls. If something something big pops off, we'll definitely go check it out. But our job tonight is just support roll and make sure that uh, everybody's in the right spot at the right time. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So. We're heading back to staging, and uh, next time you see us, we will be heading to something. Something of some importance. Not sure what, but we'll be heading there. So we're heading to a, uh, sounds like a one-story commercial fire uh, that is uh, exposing a, uh, yeah, 45 David's interrupt. It's a one-story commercial that's fully involved. They're going defensive on it, and then that's exposing a two-story. Let me just make sure I said that right. It's a one-story commercial exposing a two-story commercial. And they're already in defensive operation, which means nobody's... Nobody's going in the building, but uh, it sounded like uh, it sounded like Gabe actually was there in the area, and he rolled up on it. He was heading to a crash at uh, Mission and Valley, and after he uh, after he cleared off of that, he was like, "Hey, <laughs> there's a there's a big loom up over here, and, and it's definitely putting off a heck of a lot of." Uh, and we got a traffic collision here on the right side, big rig and a car involved. 
we are not responding to that. Yeah, look at that. That's that's ripping. So it's uh, it's going pretty good. Again, uh, Gabe saw it uh, before FD even had the call. And what's interesting is the ambulance that was going to the crash with him, I guess they didn't have a victim. The RA came up on comms and said, hey, do we have a fire in uh, one's first in? So definitely uh, right place at the right time for him. So let's, uh, we're not there yet. Alex, if you could, let's key up and see Gabe's footage right now and see what he's looking at before uh, before we get there. So let's see that pre-arrival footage. So that's what Gabe's looking at. Um, we're, uh, you can see the LAPD airship heading that way too. <laughs> There's just a massive, massive cloud of smoke coming up here. So this is going to be a pretty big. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big fire. Definitely an extended. Uh, definitely an extended operation for LAFD. Come on. Assisting you guys. Definitely an extended. Look at that. Yeah, it's it's going pretty good. But they're saying it's a one story with a uh, with a two story next door. You got about a one fifty. Yeah, here's here's the size of one fifty by one hundred. It's like a one story commercial, temporarily fortified. Ooh, it's gonna be hard hard to get into. Okay. Copy, I got eight hundred one with me. Yeah, that's gonna take a while to get into. So they said heavily fortified. So our our big concern when we're going in on a fire like this is uh, figuring out what that fire is and what that what that type of fire uh, or what's burning inside that building so that's a huge uh, that's a huge concern you we can see flames from here and we're about we're about three quarters of a mile away and we got huge huge flames on the horizon here so my concern going into this is what is on fire are are we uh, are we in danger of anything are there any placards on the building so there's gonna be uh, like I said, an extended operation, and we've, we'll park out here on mission, so we'll be we'll be in a good spot, so we don't get stuck. And they did ask for three additional task forces on this, so that's the uh, that's a lot of equipment. So, what's with our fires in the rain? Yeah, you know, every time it rains. Yo, look at that. Jeez. Oh, uh, yeah, every time, and right across from the uh, from Mission Road here. A lot of times we get uh, big fires like this, and. Uh, Start it is raining, which is uh, which is interesting. Yeah, that's going, going. So, alrighty, we'll go. Uh, oh, we got a good uh, good parking spot. Oh, we want to be on this side because they're putting hydrants down. Right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go here. Yeah, we're gonna go further. Does that go through? No. We'll just, we'll just park here. I just don't want to get stuck because our plan is not to stay here. Yeah, I'm just going code six. It's a, it's a ripper. If you could, if they do mention what's on fire, let me know for safety. Copy. There's another structure fire, probably a quarter mile north. Uh, it's going to be on 20th Street. Always the first signs of this. You have your radio on yet? Yeah, I got my radio on me. So, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what the size up is there, and I can break off. Um, it might be people seeing this fire though, because it's this is pretty big. All right, so we'll relieve uh, we'll relieve Gabriel for a little bit, and then uh, and then once he uh, once he comes back on it, then we'll then we'll get out of here. But yeah, this is gonna be a long long fire, and I don't want to I don't want to get stuck. I saw that. 
Say again. Load it. Got a roof collapse. Yeah, I'm about uh, mid block, and I can feel the heat from here, so it's it's going pretty good. All right, let me uh, let me tap him out, and then uh, I'll tap him out, and then I'll I'll take over until until he clears. Uh, that's a big one. Definitely a big one. Watch the spikes. Wow. We're fine here. That's definitely uh, one of the largest. Uh, definitely a big one, Tay. It is toasty, isn't it? Yeah, this, the heat out here, even where we're at. Is uh, it's pretty, pretty intense. <sighs> All right. Not too bad, huh? It's a little fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a little this I would say thousands tens of thousands of gallons maybe even 100,000 gallons of water it's a, it's a lot it's a hell of a lot of water 536 455 
Ryan, can you raise him and just make sure that he's good? Um, I'm gonna stand by for a little bit until he's uh, clear back in. There we go. You see the ladder pipe on the back side? Look at that. I want to get the water pipe on the back side. Right there. You're good. So that sounded like uh, that sounded like a gas line letting go, but we're uh, we're far enough back where that's not really a uh, major concern. Um, there we go. So right now, what the guys are saying on the radio, this is going to be a major emergency structure fire. LAFD doesn't have first, second, third alarms. They have either a greater greater alarm, major emergency. Those are the different. Uh, situated and I will those are the different ratings for the types of fires that you can expect in a situation like this. Um, this is a prime example of a, just a massive, massive fire that we see. Uh, this area down south, we have a lot of large commercial buildings that are either abandoned or doing business as uh, some type of uh, clothing manufacturing. Or I'm not sure what the case is right now, but um, I do see the tow yard that's on this side, but I'm not actually sure what's inside that building there. That could be a part of the tow yard, maybe a shop, something like that. But uh, either way, this is uh, just a, a prime, prime example of how big a fire can get, how, and very quickly, because again, Gabriel was in the area. We'll ask him when we see him, when he comes back in. We'll chat with him and see what, uh, what he saw when he got here, because he was on a crash just to the east, and their suspect, I think, was running, I want to say eastbound, uh, this is to the west of where he was, so he was going to that, and then he ended up coming back uh, over this direction, obviously because he saw the smoke and everything everything that was going on. So uh, it looks like they got the two ladder pipes up right now. They'll, they'll probably try and get three if they can get a vehicle, uh, if they can get a truck on the backside. Um, but as of right now, we got two ladder pipes on it, uh, heavy streams. They're using the big, big hose, big fire, as we learned in season one. And uh, City Fire's got a ton, ton of guys out here, so they'll keep... Uh, They'll keep sending uh, more resources. They'll send emergency air. They'll send them the, the uh, abilities for them to continue to fight this fire well into the morning. Looking at what we have right here, you know, one to two story uh, commercial building, it's probably gonna be probably a six to seven, maybe even longer operation, possibly even well into the morning, dealing with hot spots and mop ups and stuff like that. So what we're looking at here could potentially be a 12 hour fire. So I'm gonna get a couple more shots. Um, a couple more shots of the flames rolling out of the windows right now, which looks beautiful. So we're going to do that. And then once uh, once Gabe gets back, then we're going to cycle out. Hey, you good? Yeah, it's in. Okay, cool. So I've got some beautiful stuff on sticks. I'm going to send that in addition to yours. It's your fire though. Okay, so you're taking that. Uh, obviously, you want to go back in where these guys are on the side. You got oh, your the, uh, the SD seventy spec troubles caught fire. I saw that. <laughs> I saw the train. I knew you'd be in it. So, but you're good. You you got the rest of this. Oh, dude, I'll second it. Okay, cool deal. And you saw because uh, I was explaining to them. You saw the loom up like from the fire. I was going to the other TC. You went to the crash over on. I didn't go to the crash. As soon okay. as I came, uh, as soon as I got onto Main Street by where the, the trains crash. Okay. I. One o'clock, I see a big up. Got it. So you didn't even make it to the crash. You no, saw this and diverted. Okay, makes sense. All right. Uh, I would go over here where the guys are doing rehab and stuff like that. And uh, just be careful because you do have the power lines going across and, and you know what to do. You got it. I got the shot of the guys in the back too. So I've already got that. I've got the ladder pipes. Did We're good go to go. To Alhambra? No, I didn't go to Alhambra. It's, it's going? Okay. Okay. Roof on the you can see the reflection in the glass over there. It looks like it's starting to come down. So 
get a couple, do like another, um, maybe shots of the guys doing the ladder pipes, more shots of the guys oh, doing their thing. Just wait until you watch it. Okay, do, do a part three just of the guys, and uh, I'll get this in, and then let me know when you're clear. I'll cover until you're free, all right? All right. Okay, sounds good. All right, everybody say goodbye to Gabe. Bye, Gabe. <laughs> all right, we're leaving him here. We've got, uh, we've got beautiful stuff on this. We're gonna take off and do the part two, but uh, yeah, pretty big, uh, pretty big fire over here in downtown. I think it's in the Boyle Heights area. We'll see when we read Gable's right up. On to the next one. Pedestrians down, northbound five. Uh, I'm 10 east uh, right now. Should I uh, turn around and wait next exit? I'm passing Caesar Chavez right now. You shouldn't be 10 east. You should be southbound five, and it's no, it's south of the uh, 10 west interchange. So uh, 536. I got it. If you want to stay open, I'll, I'll just throw it in for you guys. If you want that and you want to stay open, it's up to you. But uh, I am seeing. I'm not seeing anything. Just confirm for me guys that it is northbound, not southbound. So we have a body down, they said the number two lane at Indiana. Northbound five, just south of the 10, Central's put it out. And East LA's put it at northbound five at Indiana, just north of the yeah, Indiana is. Street. Okay, yeah, I see uh, I've got medical over here. I'm gonna flip around at Dittman, I think, because yeah, I've got a private ambulance, uh, code six. I'll be flipping around at Dittman, if I can. I think I can get back on. Let's see. Can we? Ye yes. Oh, there's another. And I've got a vehicle TC on the on the southbound side as well. I just rolled through it. There was a two, looked like a two car TA southbound. Okay. Oh yeah, we can. Five thirty six. You're way, uh, yeah, you're way north of me on this. This is further, uh, further south. So, if you could, um, just go to go to top of LA or wherever, wherever you want to stage, because we're we're way way souther than I think you think we are. If that makes sense. <laughs> Because the way the way the 10 freeway splits here, sorry Tater, it's okay. hanging on for dear life. So the way that the uh, the way that the freeway splits. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I got. All right, we're here. We're in before the break. All right, 45 is going code six before the break. Uh, rolling up here. It's gonna be uh, just north of Dittman, okay, just south there. of Calzona, it looks like, with a private auto, private ambulance, code six, and a 455 will be hitting the, uh, trying to hit the shoulder here, finding a safe spot, Please, waiting for CHP. Yep, yeah, there's the body. Oh, the shoe, see the shoe? Mm. Let's go, we're gonna go Past it? Yeah, we're gonna go past it. And there's a private ambulance there. Alex, you're gonna have to blur some of this. I can't. Yeah, Alex, blur that because that guy's missing. Uh, looks like he's missing a big, uh, big chunk of him. Yeah, he's. Uh, he is done. All right, let's uh, talk with them. Make sure they're okay, and then we'll uh, just sit tight. I'm ready. Oh, you want me sit in here? Uh, so, you can get out and film. Yeah, if you're if you're right there at the wall, you're fine. Okay. Hey, boss. You guys good? Yeah, we're good. CHP, for some reason, has you guys further north at Indiana and the 10. No, I told them the 5 and the Calzona. They've, they, for some reason, these people are calling you guys in over near the 10. Yeah. So, all right. All 
right, so CHP has it about about a mile north. Let me uh, let me dial back and let them know that that location is not correct. So that guy's. That's like the worst sound ever. You hear that? And they they covered him. Hi, ma'am. Is this CHP? Hey, just so you know, uh, oh, sorry, let me start again. My name's Zach, I'm a press photographer at Key News Network. You, uh, your body down in lanes on the five. Uh, you guys had it, I think on the CAD, it was at, uh, it was at the CAD uh, five north at the 10. It's gonna be at Calzona, at the Calzona off-ramp, exit 132. Okay, and there's a private, there's a private ambulance there, and then it's a blind crest, and you guys have traffic coming in pretty hot, so just a heads up on that. Yes, correct. Oh, there's a unit. Uh, looks like there's a unit just rolling up, but I don't think they have a break in place. Alrighty. Uh, Zach, ZAK, and I'm with uh, Key News Network. I'm a press photographer. But yeah, I don't, I don't think they have a break yet. There's a unit that just, just rolled up. So we'll, I'll see what they do. <laughs> All right, take care. All right, so you saw that one car come flying through, like terrifying. So we're in a not great spot now we're okay all right once the traffic stops then it's like then it's a little bit nicer um i'm glad we're able to find a shoulder right here um he's he's gonna be kma or deceased and then i'm sure i think there's a car further up that uh yeah there's another it looks like there's a fire truck that got on northbound right there. That might be city fire. They just got on northbound. He says that it's going to be 1144 yeah. for the uh, and Keith, and Keith's telling me he's deceased. Yeah, 499, I'm staring at him. He's uh, he's rotated in half. His waist is facing backwards. So, yeah, confirmed 1144. FD, I think, has it further north because they. Uh, it looks like they got on. Uh, they got on to go northbound. I'm going to pull forward a little bit here, but... Uh, I'm going to jump out, do my thing, and then clear off. All right, get in really quick. We're going to pull forward just a little bit because FD is probably going to want to be where we, we're at. So, yeah, so he is, um, his, his lower half is facing this way and his upper half is facing this way. So he's been, he's been twisted in half, and I'm not sure where his head is. So um, I didn't, I didn't see it. It was under, I saw it. Crazy. So, um, all right, either way. Uh, do we know the, the story at all? It's, so the story right now is we've got a... Vehicle versus pedestrian. It was three people running across the freeway. I'll read the CAD notes really quick. Vehicle versus ped. Uh, reporting party advised two peds were running. They said three on the radio, but they said two here. Two, uh, two peds were running in lanes, and the reporting party hit one. The pedestrian is down in the slow lane. RP 1023 on right side. RP hung while transferring, so they hung up. Uh, LAFD has the incident number 142. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we got. I'm gonna uh, film a little bit. Um, oh, uh, just north of Indiana, obvious signs of 1144, deceased, yep. Uh, Holland, two, three, four, five lanes, unknown duration. Oh, holding, there it is, holding all. <laughs> it looks like Holland. Uh, holding all lanes, unknown duration, uh, Caltrans for a hard closure. So, okay, they're gonna close it. Uh, we're gonna jump out, get some shots as, uh, as uh, cleanly and as discreetly as possible. And uh, that'll be it. We'll, we'll be out on to the next one. It's already, it's already open. It was open when I was moving. Let me, uh, let me talk to the chippies uh, real quick, just make sure we're good where we're at. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. There's uh, there's pieces of him everywhere, so. Hey, thank you guys for stopping. Oh, well, we, we actually passed them. Really? We didn't even know there were people flagging us down. He must have been crossing the road, because this, this must 
CHP has it as uh, two, uh, they said two or three people running across the freeway transients and one of them got hit. Wow. So the guy the guy who hit him called it in, he's down further somewhere. Yeah, but uh, but again, thank you guys for stopping. Not everybody does, so it's it's good to see that. Yes, yes, that's right, <laughs> that's right. He's on a, on a show. Doing like the news stuff, it was on Netflix. We have a YouTube series actually yeah. we're filming right now called Code Two Zero. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but we highlight like you know what we what we deal with, what we see, stuff like this. But uh, and thank you guys for covering them because I can't film anything until yeah. So I'll wait for FD and then again it's just really really cool to see you guys stop. I appreciate it. All right, thank you guys. So just spoke with uh, the private ambulance uh, guys who rolled up on it. You can see some car debris out here, some pieces of car. Um, the guy's ears and lanes over there, I mean, it's it's a mess. So um, again, we're gonna kind of sit tight. CHP is gonna have to pull through some of these cars to give, uh, give FD room. So once FD is here and we have those vehicles uh, at this location, um, you can see they're actually stuck in traffic down there. So LA, uh, CHP is gonna try to get them up here. I'm sure they'll, they'll let some of the cars come up to the left or they'll figure out a place to put them. But once FD gets here, then uh, they'll put their sheet on because the sheet that the uh, private auto or private ambulance guys are using are, are very small and there's big pieces of our victim sticking out. So we don't want to be disrespectful. We don't want to we don't want to film what's going on behind me. Um, obviously, Alex is blurring out anything that we could see, and uh, we're just going to sit tight until uh, until they pull up and traffic is not moving at all because they might let these cars come down on the side, and if they do that, then obviously we don't want to be walking around the lanes. So we're going to sit tight until LAFD gets here. And hey, let's pan this way just a little bit just to make sure, because there's a lot of, uh, it's pretty graphic over there. So, um, looks like he was hit by one, maybe multiple vehicles. Uh, when we rolled up, we saw cars going through everything. So, um, yeah, really, uh, I, there's no reason to be running across the freeway with a blind crest right like that, right? I mean, if you look where he is or where he got hit, which is probably about, probably about 200 feet down from where his body is now, you can see that it's a it's a blind corner and a blind crest. So even if you're looking down at the freeway, you can't tell if there's a car coming. And if someone's doing 80, 70, 80 miles an hour, I mean, there's nothing you can do. So they say uh, on the uh, on the CAD, they said two people running across the freeway. He had a flashlight also that was in his hand that's next to the body. Um, so if there's a, uh, again, they said two people on the CAD running across and on the radio, they said three. So. Again, and they had the report further north, which is, I'm guessing, the signs that the uh, that our, our uh, reporting party, the person that hit him, those are the signs that he saw. He didn't realize it's actually at Calzona, because after you hit somebody on the freeway, you're probably not looking at the uh, the first street sign. So that's where we're, we're going to sit tight. Uh, once, we, uh, once we're in the right spot here, we're going to pick it back up and, uh, and uh, do our thing. So that's where we're at. Find out. Might have been the guy that hit him. Morning! Hey. How's it going? Uh, Are you okay? Uh, uh, I called the 911. Oh, okay. You want to talk to CHP then? Come yeah, with me. No, I don't want to see nothing over there. Oh, okay. Did you hit? Did you hit the person? Hit the person. Okay, then just stay here and I'll go get CHP. Yeah. Just sit tight right here yeah, for me, yeah. okay? Yeah, just yeah. hang tight. The guy that uh, that's the guy that hit him. <laughs> hey, hey, boss. The, the, uh, good to see you. <laughs> the guy that hit him is over in front of my car. He doesn't want to walk over okay. here, but he walked over. I don't know if you want to okay. come yeah, over and see him. Okay. Right. You want right. me to just tell him to hang yeah, tight? Hang tight there, yeah. Okay. He's yeah. really freaked out. He doesn't want to come over here. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I'll go talk to him. Inside. Okay. Thanks, Sounds brother. good. No, you got it. Thank Thanks. you.
to be out with a walk up. It's going to be the individual that struck the the pad. He's uh, code six with me. So, give me a second. Hey, boss, you want to come over here? So, are you okay? Do you need an ambulance or anything no, no, or no? no? I, I, I'm okay. I don't need nothing. Okay. So I just told uh, CHP, and they're gonna they're gonna come over and talk to you, but they're a little bit busy, obviously. But just just hang tight right here. Uh, I'm a news photographer, so that I'm not oh, okay, I'm not with them. Okay, but okay. Um, they said just to hang tight and be careful. Just keep your eyes on traffic, obviously. But um, yeah, if you don't need an ambulance, then the, you know these guys are uh, are good. But they'll they'll come over and they'll talk with you, okay? And everything's okay. You you did the right thing. You called. You stopped. I mean, most people don't. They just yeah. take off. So I, I appreciate that, and they do too. It looks like it. They were there was uh, two or three of them like running across the freeway, and they had a flashlight and. I saw two. There's nothing you can do. It's a blind corner. It's a blind crest, and they sh you can't be running on the freeway. So you're not you're not at fault. Yeah, I saw two guys. Uh, okay. I saw three. I saw two. Okay. Well, they're gonna yeah, they're doing their thing. They know what's going on. And they'll come over and talk to you. Okay. Just hang tight. But they're, it's fine. Everything's okay. All right. So he's uh, he's in front of my car. He's a little shaken up. He's the guy, uh, the individual that actually uh, struck the uh, the pedestrian. Uh, FD, like I said, they're gonna put the uh, they're gonna put a sheet on this guy. Once they have that, then we can do our job. But uh, yeah, this poor guy, I feel terrible because he's, you know, he's shooken up by it, uh, and there's nothing you can do. You know, you're driving, you're on a blind corner, and, and next thing you know, they, uh, next thing you know, they, uh, you hit a uh, you hit a pedestrian. So that's it. All right, they're covering him up. Oh no, they're actually taking the uh, the sheet off. So we can't do anything with that. We're just gonna we're just gonna sit tight. Like I said, until uh, and let me put this this way so it doesn't uh, <laughs> it doesn't fall over. So uh, we're just gonna sit tight. Once uh, once FD puts the they have a bigger sheet that they use for the bedding and everything. Um, once they put that on them, then then we can do our job. But I, I don't want to be sitting there blurring out footage for like 20 minutes. Alrighty. See them at the fire? There we go. there was another crash on the southbound side. I'm wondering if that car saw these people running, tried to avoid them, and uh, ended up uh, ended up, you know, crashing because of it. So. And guys, he walked up. I think he, I'm assuming he parked down. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure you guys know. Thank you. All right. 
So yeah, I think the crash, it was weird too, because the crash that we came through, I want to say that car, Tay, if I'm not mistaken, was right where this private ambulance was, right? So we looked over and then I looked back and went, oh my goodness, there's a car in the center divider. So my assumption is that we had two or three people. He said he saw two. Again, over the radio, they said three, and then on the cab, they said two. So uh, I'm gonna go with two. Uh, running across, not sure which direction. I know that he was hit back further though. If you look at where LA City, excuse me, if you look at where LA City Fire is parked, there's a shoe probably another 50 feet uh, beyond that. So usually the shoes, when people get hit, if you're running along and you get hit, people get blown actually out of their shoes. It's a really interesting thing. So you'll see a lot of times where the shoes are is exactly where the beginning of that, of that incident is. So where we are now, that we're about about 110, 120 feet past where the body is, we know at this point there's not going to be any, uh, look, there's no debris, no nothing, so we are outside of where the CHP would be considered part of the crime scene. So we're in a safe spot. Uh, again, we had the guy who actually hit this uh, poor gentleman uh, come up, and he's he's pretty shaken up. He doesn't want to see what's going on, and uh, I don't really blame him. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty horrendous. So uh, that's what we've got out here on the 5 North at Calzona, giant sign right there. His ear is, is over. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, it's on the side of it. All right, so, again, pretty, uh, Tragic situation, but also avoidable, right? The exit's right here, Calzona's right here. All they had to do was walk down. There's a street right below where they were crossing they could have gone under. And uh, I don't know what people are thinking sometimes. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird thing. Something, something so basic, something so basic to us, like don't run, don't run across the freeway, right? <laughs> don't play Frogger and there's people out here doing it, risking their lives, again, around a relatively blind corner over a blind crest. So if you were to run right here, we only have less than a quarter mile of headlight to, to gauge where the cars are at. Not to say, listen, not to say, hey, this is how you go across a freeway properly, right? But <laughs> obviously you don't do it, that's like insane. Number two, if, you're gonna, if you are gonna do it and be this type of uh, person to do that, do it when you can see down maybe a mile, maybe two, right? With a lot of street lights and stuff like that. So again, LA freeways, even at this time, it's uh, it's currently going on three in the morning. There's still, as you can see, a heck of a lot of traffic. So we're gonna get this up, get this in. I feel bad for the driver, honestly, the guy that hit him, I, that's who I feel bad for. This guy made a stupid decision. This guy tried his best to avoid it, ends up killing him, and now he has to live with uh, live with the thought of, yeah, I, I doinked somebody on the freeway. So not, uh, not cool, but either way, we did our job. We're telling the story. We're gonna get this in and get ourselves on to the next one. Oh, there's the private, uh, private ambulance guys. These guys were cool. See you guys, thank you. All right, cool deal. Let's get on to the next one.